Yo, what is up guys? So we're here to see the new Witchcrafts in action. Now, they just released a bunch of new cards, so in addition to going over some gameplay over here, guys, we are also going to be checking out the card effects once we get into the deck profiles. I have read all of their effects so I could actually commentate and mention what the heck is going on, but the archetype is all about just getting rid of spell cards in your hand, and then basically as long as you control Witchcraft, you get to place them back or add them to your hand for free. Uh, that is what the archetype is based off of. So, Courtesy of Atlas Rising, we're going to see a Light Swarm build, we'll see a Pure variant and another variant as well. So I've got lots of gameplay of this, and we're here to again check it out. Now I want you guys, hold on, really quick, to answer in the comment section below, do you guys think this deck is overhyped or is it trash? Because I've seen the Yu-Gi-Oh! community say this is the next best deck, is the Zodiac, and I've heard people say this deck is garbage, people are, don't know what they're talking about. I haven't seen the deck in action, so I will answer that question after I see, but I want your guys' opinion on it. But if you haven't seen it before, maybe I guess you can just comment at the end here. But like I said, the archetype is all about getting rid of spell cards to activate some of their effects. To spell summon another like witchcraft or essentially do something. And then with a lot of the spells and traps, as long as you control a witchcraft and the cards in your graveyard, you get to either add it to your hand or just gain some extra bonus effect. Um, because that's just how the archetype works. Alright, so that was a pretty fast game over here. His opponent looks like he, unfortunately, didn't have too much plays. He just had a Light Sworn Judgment, and that was going to be GG, because the board was just too difficult to deal with, because uh, Witchcraft Master, very over here, actually has a really good effect, where as a quick effect, you can discard a spell card and negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent controls until the end of the turn. So pretty much, that's like a GG. He would literally summon Luminate, attempt to go for effect, he would activate that, and that's GG for him anyway. So, he kind of GG'd a little early, he could, tried to use it, but I, I, I assume that it would have been negated. Let's go and check out some more plays. But uh, we will go over all of their effects, it's just I want to show you guys some gameplay here uh, while we talk about it. So, like I said, it can technically work quite well in Light Sworn, but it, you know, Light Sworn is random, sometimes you get the wrong cards in the graveyard, you can brick. Whatever the case may be, he's going to go ahead and go for Curious. I'm going to send a Felice to the grave, going to get that effect. And then he's going to go ahead and get a free Wolf. Wow. All right, at this point, we're just looking at straight up last one. But we have the effect of the Witchcraft Pitora over here. Where you can banish this card, draw a card, and then send a Witchcraft card from your hand to the graveyard. And if you do not have any, you can banish your entire hand, which is actually a downside over there. But we still, oh gosh, look at this. We got a Crystal Wing, we got Minerva, we got Curious over here. Uh, we have Adele, which as a quick effect, we could just special summon a Witchcraft by discarding any spell card. And that's going to go straight into Schmidta. Schmidta has the effect where you tribute it to grab any Witchcraft monster. And he's going to go ahead and make Hyain over here. And then it makes it so your opponent can't target spellcaster monsters with effects. And then on top of that, as a quick effect, you get to discard one spell card, target one face-up card your opponent controls, and just try to destroy it. Wow. This is a really insane deck because you're able to dodge. Most of the monsters in the whole archetype are like, yo, you want to do something to me? Oh, I'm going to go ahead and get out a different monster. That's pretty dirty. Although Dark Hole would probably prevent you from getting wrecked. But there's another card that prevents your monsters from being destroyed, which we'll see and talk about very soon. But, I mean, that was pretty dirty. I mean, a Crystal Wing, this is like double negates. I mean, at the end of the day, two negates, still not that bad in Yu-Gi-Oh! But I think we need more negates to make it go even harder for those plays. We'll, we'll mix it up. I'll give you guys some more peer variants. But shout out to Magus Lucis for this play over here. Uh, like I said, we're going to see a lot of different variants of this deck in action here. And we'll kind of decide maybe which one is the best. So, this is, the, this is I would consider this the boss monster of the deck. It's it's level 8. Uh, but you could just special summon it by just going straight from Schmidta into it. A lot of them have the effect where you just special summon a witchcraft from the deck. But this one also has a bonus effect. So I mentioned, oh, I hope some of these don't error out because we just got these in and they were working perfectly fine before. But sometimes there's an it says there's an error, but it's totally fine. So like I said, this card is so incredibly stupid. Just be able to special summon this card from the deck and just be like, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and straight up be able to uh, get rid of one spell card and then I negate all your monsters effects and I have 2,800 defense points. That's insane to me. And then on top of that, if uh, a spellcaster monster battles, you can just reveal any number of spells with different names, and it just gains a thousand attack and defense until the end of this turn. So pretty much that means you'll have a 3,800 defender if you just have one. Wow, that's pretty dirty because they are spellcaster. Go ahead and throw in secret village. Secret village plus this is like a lockdown. You can't use any spells if you control a spellcaster, and if they're going to summon a spellcaster, you can just negate the effect of it anyways. Dude, this is pretty nasty. But... 
the back row is really where this deck can actually shine because a lot of these cards you just get for free anyways because you're, you're discarding them via the uh, effects or re revealing whatever the case may be. But um, scroll over here has the effect where the spellcasters, whenever they destroy a monster by battle, you can actually draw one card. And then they have two different effects. So scroll unfortunately went to the grave here. But if a witchcraft monster you control would discard a card, you can send this card to the graveyard instead. So it can act as one of the discard outlets. And then on top of that, uh, during the end phase, well, actually, if we can mouse over it, during the end phase, if you control a witchcraft monster and this card is in the graveyard, you can just place it face up in your spell and trap zone. So that gives you free, like, discard fodder, almost like a once per turn thing. So he's going to go ahead and just boost that card up. The, the Hyane over here is actually really strong, um, in addition to obviously being able to negate effects, popping a card. Like, if you have there and you have Hyane on board, basically you have a pop one and negate their entire board. Like, the, the fact that it negates all face-up monsters is absolutely insane, but let's see what this play ends up doing. Alright, they also have a card called the Witchcraft By Street. And the first time any witchcraft monster you control would be destroyed by battle by card effect each turn, it's not destroyed. And then it has two effects. Uh, one of the effects is if you would discard a card, you can go ahead and utilize the effect of just setting this card to the grave right during your end phase if you control witchcraft. You can go ahead and re-add this card um, back. And you can uh, place this uh, face up in your spell and trap zone. And it looks like his opponent just GG'd over here. So this is more of a pure control variant. Again, this two, this just this setup right here, dude, that's nasty. That's a very control variant. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see a lot of different plays over here. Let me go swap it over. Shout out to my boy Teriyaki for these. And I'll have all of them linked down below if you guys want to check out their channels. But uh, I'm really here to see more plays. Unfortunately, y'all, Snake Boy by himself, not looking too spicy, but we got damage equal reptile. Once we're going to take battle damage from a battle involving a reptile monster, you can spell one reptile monster from your deck. Oh, is this like a Venomanaga deck? I, is this what? Okay. What the? I, I, don't, I honestly don't even. It's a. Uh, well, it's a. Uh, he's got the king, but what about the. Ah, uh, and okay. I haven't seen this deck in a while. I don't know if there's any like new combos with this that like links offer. This guy even playing? He's playing links. Okay, there might be some combo. I honestly don't know. Sorry about this little error thing that's popping up. The replays seem to be working fine though. But uh, here's another card we have not gone over, which is the Witchcraft Creation. Here, it lets you add a Witchcraft monster from your deck to your hand during your end phase. And if you control a Witchcraft monster and this card is in your graveyard, you can just add it to your hand. And then you can only use one Witchcraft Creation per turn. So though, Search out whatever card you want. Dang, that was really fast. Uh, I mean, this effect, just to reveal any amount, um, I mean, you're opening up the door to a lot of just one hits, right? Which is absolutely insane. It says it's also affected by witchcraft collaboration. Uh, I wish I could... I wish I could click on that. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about some of the other cards. But I, I'm really, like I said, here to showcase off different builds and different ways to actually play the deck. We saw the secret village control variant, which I think is very good. Um, there's notice, I'm not sure if the extra deck glitched out. Sometimes that that can, that can happen when there's newer cards, but um, I always recommend you guys to play an extra deck or heck, throw in the pot of indulgence, whatever they changed the name to in the TCG. Uh, so he's gonna increase attack, but he's like, yo bro, I'm gonna increase my attack too. That's pretty nasty, you did 4,000 like, you're not really going to be beating this anytime soon, but we have Keeper of the Dragon, Magic. He can't actually any spells. I think, I honestly feel like the Life Swarm one, it has Wombo Combo plays, but I really feel like the Secret Village is the way to go with this deck. And there's so many decks that can lock your opponent out. I remember we saw Crystal Wing, and then we, of course, had the Hind, uh, which is a double in the gate. But when you add in the Secret Village, dude, th this is the setup. This is not even hard at all, guys, to throw out with this deck. Because you have a Monster Reborn in the deck already. And remember, since their effects... Ooh, he's activating all... That do it doesn't matter, dude. They get all Monster effects. Like, how, how is that... I guess he changed it to itself, but it don't matter. Dude, that's... That's really, really nasty. Uh, that was just like an instant win. I feel like Secret Village, uh, these kinds of cards just need to go, man. We, we got Rainbow Neo's turn one. He's he rushing out. <laughs> Mr. Steal Your Mom. All right, we just go ahead and activate that. And that's going to be GG for a lot of decks. I mean, how, how is the Neo's deck going to be playing? I mean, he just sits this in defense mode. Oh, he's got the Super Poly, but it doesn't even matter. He's going to go ahead and shuffle everything back. Uh, permanence is going to be activated, but he's got a Super Poly. And he better activate those right now. He's going for the... Brave Neos. So, 
Whenever it destroys a monster by battle, you get to add a spell or trap. Um, so let's go ahead and see how he plays out of this. So Pator is going to go ahead and go into Hyene. Like I said, th their effects just to be able to get out whatever they want is absolutely insane. Uh, so this card is going to go ahead and protect the Brave Neos over here. And then Vion. But remember, he can always just go ahead and activate that effect and just get rid of a card. That card's going to boost that card. And uh, he's going to go ahead and lose his card. But Brave Neos is also gone. And I don't think he's going to be able to do too much because there's a Spellcaster out on the board. He could have uh, played a little bit more aggressive and attacked right into it. I don't know, because if that was going to be a back row that he was perhaps afraid of. But again, at any point, he can just bear and just go straight into I negate your effects. And that's insane. I feel like the ability to just straight up negate... I mean, right now I know uh, number 41 um, is technically stopping everything else from going off. Uh, but that also makes it so he can't really do anything unless, of course, he changes this. But by the time he changes this, like I said, he can just bear and just, bam, instant access. But he can't do anything. Man, dude, going against Sky Strikers could be pretty nasty. Could be pretty nasty indeed. But uh, the fact that Schmidt can just go into whatever you want to go for over here, it, it is pretty good. But this is one of these setups where, like, the guy can't really win. Um, unless he gets rid of all the spellcasters. But his whole deck doesn't have spellcasters. So I would say this is more of a an unfortunate matchup for him. But there's a lot of decks that just don't have a spellcaster. What do you do? Summon effect Valor so you can finally activate your stuff? Alright. There's a lot more plays over here. But I think maybe we'll make like a part two of this. Because I do want to see more of these plays. But I feel like a lot of these are kind of... Similar setups, where we're trying to make a Vare, and then we go for a Hyane, and that's pretty much a GG. Alright, we got Mirror Match over here, and then, okay, I haven't talked about the, the Masterpiece, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So if you control Witchcraft, you target a spell in either Graveyard, uh, add one card with the same name from your deck to your hand, then you can manage this card in any number of spell cards from your Graveyard, except for the turn that was sent to the Graveyard, a special one Witchcraft monster from the deck, whose level is equal to... Number of spells banished to activate this effect. You can only use each effect of it once per turn. Uh, I'm probably not going to get a high level one, but it doesn't really matter. Schmidt goes into anything anyways. So it's not that big of a deal. And then again, during that end phase, just being able to add back the cards for free um, is really dirty. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and go into Hyane. But he's got to watch out because he already has a Vare on board. So he's going to go ahead activate that effect. I feel like this is the key card in the deck to kind of just get out as, as quickly as possible. So he's going to go ahead and make one himself. And he's going to just go ahead and hang and get rid of it. He didn't, unfortunately, have any of the spell cards at his disposal. So right now, he's not going to be in a good position. But he's going to go ahead and activate that effect. But it doesn't really matter because, well, Hain can just pop whatever he wants. All right, so I think we've seen a decent amount. I'll, I'll probably cover it again in the future, but I wanted to go ahead and kind of give you guys a brief little uh, showcasing of the deck. Now that we've seen pretty much every single card, we've seen the Searcher, we've seen the Reborn. Um, this is the collaboration though that we didn't go over. This is the last card that I just want to read the effect of. Um, but yeah, pretty much all of them, you discard one to do something. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we didn't go over collaboration. So collaboration is you target a Witchcraft, it can make a second attack during each battle phase if it attacks. Oh, that's pretty ridiculous with this. Um, and then on top of that, your opponent can't add any spells or trap cards until the end of the damage step. And during your end phase, if you control Witchcraft and this card is in your graveyard, you can add this card to your hand. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, all the cards, regardless of how viable they are, if you don't need them at that moment, you just go ahead and activate their effects. And you're getting the card back for free anyways. It's a very one card, uh, one like monster oriented deck. Like you don't get the opportunity too often. Um, to, of course, go for multiple, uh, monsters, uh, I would say, uh, until, like, your opponent's turn, because you're activating that other quick effect. If you're, uh, if you are activating it twice, that is. So, the weakness of this deck would be, basically, to try to get off your one summon. If your one summon doesn't go through, your follow-up plays for this deck are, I would say, relatively weak. You maybe have Sabotage, <clears throat> but if Sabotage doesn't go through... Uh, or you just didn't happen to draw, what do you do in this deck? I think that you'll just have to take the quick L. It's a very, uh, you know, summon-oriented deck where they don't have very much follow-up plays if you negate their first summon. Because as far as I'm aware of, none of the monsters just special summon themselves. Like, it's just like, oh, you control the monster special. Like, if they had a Cyber Dragon, uh, 
but like all the effects is just quick effect you tribute it discard special summon another one over here you can tribute this card discard summon another witchcraft monster uh if they get one more like spell card that lets you special summon from the deck or something that would be insane there's this one that lets you add but it doesn't let you special summon so again i feel like that that would be the downsides of the deck is if your summon gets of course negated but there were several different builds here. Uh, I'll mouse over the cards because I do have like three deck profiles to kind of go over, but I wanted this to serve as an introduction to the uh, deck, and I will showcase off the rest of the plays, but I kind of want to get your guys' thoughts on this deck so far. Which build do you guys personally like the most? We saw some great fields with the Light Swarm one where we're able to get a lot of free extra effects, right? Oops. Uh, but like I said before, I think Pot of Indulgence over here was a great addition to the deck. Oh, summon limit. That could be that. that we didn't see that in the, uh, in the duels. Uh, but I mean, this is already locked down. You were in multiple lockdowns, dude. If you could summon limit, then turn one and then throw out this. Like, what does that do? That's insane. Because remember, they can uh, neither player can summon more than two times per turn. This deck doesn't need to summon two times per turn. I think this one look looking pretty spicy over here. And then we got rivalry over here also because well it doesn't really matter for this deck uh, because they are all small casters. Anyways, that could be another nasty card to run into for sure. Um, but yeah, I think Pot of uh, Indulgence is an excellent, excellent card for the archetype because you don't need an extra deck at all uh, for this deck. Um, but there was also the Light Sworn one. Oops, where's that Light Sworn one? The Light Sworn one is kind of crazy with its build, but obviously it has more combo-licious plays, which, you know, I can definitely say I'm a fan of decks that can combo pretty hard. But when you mix in, like, Triple triple Wolf, Triple Felice, uh, and you just don't have that outlet, sometimes, yeah, Brick Hands can happen, but, you know, you do happen to have sometimes cards like Solar Recharge to kind of help out, mitigate some of that. And if you can't utilize your solar recharges or charge, uh, well, charge library is always active, but like you don't have a life sworn. I mean, the effect is just to discard one spell card. It doesn't have to be a witchcraft, which is something that's kind of important. Oh, we even have inheritor. Oh, we're playing. Okay, we're, okay, we're going for that free monster reborn. But uh, pretty cool stuff. I do think the deck has a lot of potential. Do I think it's OP in the best deck? I don't know if I would consider it to the next Zodiac, all right? Because Zodiac was so splashable in everything. Like, Sky Strikers were super splashable in every single deck because you just can go straight for freak stuff, right? But the way I see it is that it's heavily reliant on specifically... Like, if you're running a pure variant, your first summon, if that first summon gets stopped, I just don't see any very strong follow-up plays in the, the deck. But, technically, with the Buy Street card, you go ahead and throw this first and then you make your plays i don't know i think that it has a lot more potential uh, again in the future if we get any more support because you know they're going to get some link cards pretty soon i mean every new archetype's got to have a link monster so here's my impressions on the deck it's definitely good it's not a trash tier deck it definitely has a lot of potential especially since like you have this card makes it so that it can't be destroyed battle can't be destroyed by card effect every single turn and then if you need to get rid of it you can just get rid of it and then you can reset the card which is really nasty and then on top of that you can just go for whatever you want in the deck and it's usually going to be Vair and hyane but if you think about going back to like the, the evil eyes i mean their whole archetype basically has a monster that has a quick effect same thing uh, but they don't have a negate all monster effects, so I don't know. I feel like this deck outclasses a lot of the newer stuff that's coming out. I mean, th there's very few Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the game that can negate everything on your opponent's board. <laughs> and that's what this card does. You just discard a spell, negating the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent controls until the end of this turn. That's dirty, man. It really is. But anyways, now that you guys have seen the new Witchcraft in action, let me know your thoughts down below. Is the deck OP? Does it suck? I think it's good. I think it's really, really, really good, but I wouldn't say so broken that, like, it's a tier zero format. If you don't play this deck, you just straight up lose Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't think it's on that level. But, yo, you open up with Secret Village, and then you throw in a fair, and then you throw in a high end. Ah, dude, it's game over, dude. Like, you just lost. <laughs> but that, so many decks can negate multiple things anyway, so... That's just how Yu-Gi-Oh is these days. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Felt like I ranted off. Like I said, shouts to everyone sending in Magus, Teriyaki, as well as Atlas. You guys all did different builds. I like it, though. That's that's why I wanted to cover it. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed checking them out. And if you enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to see more Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. And if you guys got any cool replays, feel free to go ahead and send them into AsianEyesReplays at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. I'm signing out.